Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Anhar and welcome back to MSFT webcast. In this video, we are going to learn the steps on how to create a NAT virtual switch on Hyper-V. We will learn how to create a Hyper-V virtual switch with network address translation allowing VMs to be isolated behind a single shared IP address on the host. A NAT network allows virtual machines to access external host or other VMs by using the host computer's IP address and a port, all through an internal Hyper-V virtual switch. It allows multiple devices on a local network to share a single public IP address when communicating with the external networks such as the internet. You cannot create a NAT virtual switch from the Hyper-V manager, but it can be set up using PowerShell. First, let's launch a Windows PowerShell admin prompt. Right-click the Windows Start button and select Terminal Admin to launch the PowerShell with administrative permissions. The first thing to do is to create a virtual switch using the new VM switch PowerShell command. Type command new VM switch hyphen switch name hyphen switch type internal. This command will create internal virtual switch with the name nat-intvswitch. Press enter to create an internal switch. The internal virtual switch with the name nat-intvswitch has been created successfully. Open run menu, type ncpa.cpl and press enter. We can verify the associated internal virtual network adapter is also created successfully. Let me close network connections window. The next step is to configure the virtual network adapter associated with the internal virtual switch. Before proceeding, we need to run the get-nat adapter command to retrieve the interface index. Type command get-nat adapter and press enter. The output will display a list of adapters present on the Hyper-V host. Look at the interface name in the output to find the interface index of the virtual switch we just created. In this example, the interface index number is 19. Note down the interface index number of this virtual adapter. The next step is to assign an IP address to this virtual adapter in order to configure the NAT gateway IP. We will use the 192.168.1.0/24 1 network for the VMs to access the internet via network address translation. We will use the first address of this network 192.168.1.1 1 .1, as the gateway. By using this IP address as the gateway, the VM can send traffic outside of its network. Adjust the IP address range according to your network topology and IP addressing scheme. Type command new hyphen net IP address hyphen IP address 192.168.1.1 hyphen prefix length 24 hyphen interface index 19. Here 192.168.1.1 is the IP address we want to assign to the interface using the default subnet mask. The interface index 19 specifies the virtual adapter that we will use for network address translation. Press enter to run the command. The IP address has been successfully assigned to our virtual ethernet adapter. The final step is to configure the NAT network. Tap the command new hyphen NAT NAT hyphen name test NAT network 01 hyphen internal IP interface address prefix 192.168.1.0/24. Here, taste net network 01 represents the name of the network address translation network. You can use this name to remove the network address translation network later if needed. The net subnet prefix defines both the net gateway IP prefix and the net subnet prefix length. Press enter to configure the network address translation network. Congratulations, we now have a virtual NAT network configured on this Hyper-V host. In Hyper-V, let's change the VMs to use the newly created NAT to virtual switch. Go back to Hyper-V manager. Right click on the virtual machine you want to connect to the virtual switch and select settings. I haven't added virtual network adapter to this virtual machine. So select network adapter and click on add to add a network adapter to this virtual machine. Now select the virtual switch you want to connect the new virtual ethernet adapter to. In this example, we will choose the NAT virtual switch we just created. Let me select the switch with the name NAT-INT-VSwitch. This is the NAT internal virtual switch we just created. Now click OK to save the changes. Perfect. Now let's start the virtual machine by right clicking on the VM and select Start. Again right click on the virtual machine and select Connect. 
Now let's configure the VM with an IP address from the network we configured earlier. In our case, this is the 192.168.1.0/24 network. Open Run menu, type ncpa.cpl and hit Enter. Right-click the network adapter and select Properties. Choose Internet Protocol version 4 and then select Properties. We will assign the IP address 192.168.1.11 to the VM and set the gateway to 192.168.1.1. Enter 8.8.8.8 as the preferred DNS server's address. This is the Google's public DNS server's IP address. Click OK and click on Close. Now our Hyper-V virtual machines will use NAT when accessing different network like external network or internet. All VMs on the 192.168.1.0/24 network will use the Hyper-V machine's physical adapter when accessing the internet or any external network. Now we need to check if the virtual machines can successfully ping to an external IP. Open Run menu, type CMD and press Enter. Type the command ping 8.8.8.8 .8 and press enter. The VM configured with the IP address 192.168.1.11 is able to ping the external IP address 8.8.8.8 .8 confirming that NAT is working as configured. We can view the NAT sessions from the Hyper-V host machine confirming that the traffic is being root properly. Go back to Windows PowerShell. Type command get -net, net session and press enter to view the active NAT sessions. Check the internal source address and the external destination address to ensure proper NAT translation and routing. Setting up network address translation using the Hyper-V virtual switch is a straightforward process. NAT setup using the Hyper-V virtual switch allows VMs on the internal networks to access external resources while maintaining their isolation. That's all for this video on how to create a NAT virtual switch in Hyper-V. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.